Well, it's Friday night, and I just got everything shut down here at the print farm. I'm going to have a quiet weekend for a change. I don't really plan to run anything down here unless I have to, but I've been, I'm going to start going through and checking alignment on a lot of the printers that might have a question. Just make sure that everything is, all the settings are good and so forth. And as you can see, it's almost nine o'clock on a Friday night. And told my wife I would be back up at the house, so I'd better be there. Anyway, I thought I'd just, I had the camera with me, so I thought I would uh, go ahead and shoot a little video uh, down here and I might shoot some this weekend showing you some of the things that we're doing I'll briefly just cover a couple things one I've been Getting more of the printers Assembled I still have six over here to do uh, I don't really have room for six more here, but I'm going to make some more room and Maybe put another shelf unit in I may have to take this table out but if I have to do that, so be it. Anyway, everything down here, I still have lighting. You notice how I've got the lighting for those printers. I still have the lighting to install over here on these newer printers that I've put in. Of course, in necessity, I've got my little music system here. So I've got music to listen to. A thousand miles from nowhere. <laughs> well, that's kind of appropriate. Uh, Dwight Yoakam there. Yeah, I feel like I'm a thousand miles from nowhere sometimes when I'm down here working on these printers, especially when it gets late at night. But we're we're making progress. I got a little whiteboard up here, and I thought this will be pretty cool because now I can go go in here and demonstrate certain things or draw some things out here and show how they're going and so forth so i've got that and that that'll help me a little bit instead of using those small ones that i use for the keeping track with the printer stuff and another thing, uh, let's see, in the other room here, we've got a lot of our filament organized over here. So we still have a lot of it in boxes and stuff, but we've got a lot of it out here on the shelf. This is mostly PETG here, mostly PLA over here. And then we've got a little shipping area down here where I've got my packing materials and my boxes and so forth. So that'll help us. We're going to expand on that a little bit. And we'll be expanding out into the big area before long. But it just takes time to do all of this. I'm really glad that my grandson has helped me a little bit. Tanner's been a lot of help. And when he comes back, we'll be... I'll get him to help me do the electrical wiring for the uh, lights and everything and finish putting this bottom shelf in for the bottom row of printers. So anyway, that's just a few things I thought I'd pass along going on down here at the new print farm. I think I've got, as I've told you before, it's not all fun and games, 3D printing. I've had comments asking why I use the ANET printers or so many of them and of course I, I have several different brands and types of printers that I use but I do primarily use ANETs down here at the print farm and one reason for that is that that's what I started with because it was an inexpensive printer and recently 
for some reason on eBay these A nets, the ET fours, which are the auto leveling like this this one right here, these guys are selling for like a hundred and eleven or hundred and fourteen dollars. And as you can see, I've got four stacked up over there. And I bought four the other day. So um, I bought some more of them. And the reason is because, like I've mentioned in my videos, the A-Nets do work well for me. I have, the biggest problem I have is uh, with the glass beds is adhesion. And that's not the printer's fault that's the operator's fault so you just have to learn the right temperatures and the right conditions and settings to uh, prevent adhesion problems and other than that the printers work well not to say that i don't have problems for example this et4x right here as you can see i've got it torn apart a little bit what happened with it was it was running a print job and I, it lost adhesion. There again, my adhesion problem. And when it did, it just started moving the parts around and this glob of plastic went up over the hot end. And when that happens, you're gonna have to tear down this hot end and replace it. You can't just clean it up and go because I found that the filament works a lot like solder. It uh, wicks into the um, cavity around the heating element. It gets in this hole around the heating element. and gets around your heating element and around your thermocouple. And once that happens, then you're going to have unreliable uh, control of your hot end because I don't know exactly how the having that melted filament around the heating element and around the thermocouple is going to affect things. It possibly has an insulating effect and it may lead you to believe that you've got a certain hot end temperature when it's not that at all. Plus it's just a messy mess. So this is the first one that I've had this bad that where it got in where I'm gonna and I'm just gonna replace it. This whole hot end with the thermocouple, the heating element, Everything else, you can buy it on eBay for about eight or nine bucks. So I have a whole bunch of them just for an occasion like this. And I'm just going to simply replace them and get this printer back up and running. Okay, we're talking about uh, repairing the hot end on this. And I pulled out some of these uh, parts here, spare parts. It's always a good idea to have several hot ends. Uh, these are for the XY2 Pro printers. And uh, you always want to have a good supply of nozzles. I've got a ton of these around. The insulators that go over the hot end, I've got, as you can see, quite a few of those because those have to be replaced from time to time. Then thermocouples, the actual heat blocks and threaded tubes. Just uh, an assortment of parts that uh, it's good to have around because if you're going to run a lot of these printers, some of these parts are periodically going to have to be replaced. They're like replacing the battery or the tires on a car so have a good supply of spare parts for your printers and if you're using a lot of one printer that makes it a lot easier because then 
you don't have to have a lot of different types of parts for different types of printers. Uh, that's another reason that uh, since I started with the A-Nets, I'm sticking with them. And I've learned a lot about them. You learn a lot about a printer the more you print with it. And it's amazing how well the printers work when, <laughs> when you work with them. And other than that, you do have some problems. Um, I had a problem with another printer here. Oh, I know. This one right here. Yeah, this ET4, I was running it and I found that it wasn't feeding the filament. I was getting a real fine stream here. So I'm going to replace the nozzle and see if that fixes it. And then if it doesn't, there's two things that I found that cause you not to get enough filament through the nozzle. One is either the nozzle uh, has buildup in it and is restricting the flow, or your drive up here, the drive up here, the tension may not be adjusted tight enough and it may not be putting enough force pushing that filament down to the uh, hot end through the nozzle. And um, so I'm gonna, it's simple enough, I'm gonna replace the nozzle, try it. If everything works fine, great. If not, then I'm gonna go up here and uh, do adjustment. If I have to, I'll re replace this drive up here because sometimes that drive gear will get worn I do get build up on it sometimes where the filament will build up in the slots of the drive uh, gear or, and when it does that it, it's uh, like a car tire once you uh, lose your tread it tends to slip so there, there are a couple things there but those aren't a reflection on the quality of the printer and everything that's just normal wear and tear and maintenance but if if you do the maintenance on them and everything these printers will run uh, this printer's been running for about 24 hours now and um, it takes a long time to this is a high density i'm printing experimenting around with the lap diner i printed a lightweight version and then I'm printing a high density version, which is practically, well, it is 100% infill. And just to see, so far the weight, it, it's definitely durable. And, but I don't think I have to go that far. So after I print this and see what the color looks like and everything, the uh, six that I'm gonna run up here above it that I'll probably start tomorrow. I have some different settings on that where I'll be, uh, I think the infill I believe is at about 50%, but I still have, and I believe I have a, a one mil, one millimeter uh, wall in top and bottom thickness. So we'll see how those work out, but you just have to work around and play with these printers and like I said, I have several other brands. I don't have problems with them either. I don't have problems with the Ender 3. I don't have problems with the Tronixes. I don't have a problem with the FL Sun. I don't have problems with the Monoprice. I, they all work. And if they have a problem, learn how to fix them. They're usually easy to fix. It's usually a minor problem. With these A-Nets, once they're set up, they run pretty good. I just, on these two down here, they're going to print, I know they're going to print good, because these are two, the last two that I went through. I'll pull these printers off the shelf uh, periodically and do some maintenance on them, which is to add a little of uh, that white grease to the screw drives and uh, check all the rollers and make sure everything's tight on the printer. Make sure you don't have any movement here. 
make sure the belts everything's moving good and do the adjustments on them get the auto even though they have automatic leveling sometimes you can take these things right out of the box and not adjust anything and they'll print but don't expect that all the time most of the time i have to make adjustments to it there's a leveling sensor here that has uh, two different adjustments a physical height adjustment and then an electromechanical adjustment with a where you adjust a screw on a potentiometer and you have to do those settings and with the help of the software you can get these things to where they will auto level accurately and you manually that initial time level the bed but after a lot of running and everything like I said I pulled these two off and I had some other ones out recently but I'll pull them off and check all of that just to make sure that nothing's gotten out of alignment and that nothing's loosened up or worn and just make sure they're printing good that's the that's the important thing another person mentioned that they were paying five or six hundred dollars at their print farm on each printer and using a higher quality uh, printer well that that's great, but when you're talking about five or six hundred dollars and I'm buying these things for less than two hundred and in some cases now close to a hundred dollars each, I can't justify that kind of cost when I can print these and keep this large a number of printers going by myself. I can't obviously I don't have that much of a maintenance problem. So until the next time, happy printing from New Tech Inventors.